today we're going to be making layered paper mandelas. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be making mandelas today, and there are so many ways to make mandelas. Um, you can make them in anything, any shapes, multiple layers, you can do just a few layers or a lot of layers. Um, the supplies are very simple for mandelas, which is one of the reasons I think people love them so much. Um, ultimately, all you need is a cutting machine, you'll need some cardstock, and you'll need some foam sticky tabs. The foam tabs, lots of brands sell them. I've used the Tombow brand. I have some other resources here for these ones that are like long and skinny. Um, so I'm going to link those below the video for you. Um, so you can use the exact supplies I'm using here. Now for the paper, um, there's not too many restrictions on the paper you use. I've used Tex weight paper and um, cover weight paper, cover weight being thicker than the text weight paper. Here I have some text weight metallic cardstock. I also have some metallic um, mirror cardstock here. I have glitter cardstock and then I've used just plain matted cardstock as well. Like, let's see this one right here. This is plain matted cardstock as well. Um, generally speaking, these are between 50 and 80 pounds in weight of cardstock. Um, so 50 pound is generally considered text weight. Anything above 65 pound is generally considered a cover weight. Um, so you can use really any of those weights. I have not had any issues using a mixture of them. I've used the lighter ones and the heavier cardstock weights both successfully. Um, so I am going to be using um, a variety of metallic cardstocks for this, some mirror cardstock and some glitter cardstock for the Mandela's, Mandela's I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial. If you want to know where I got all these types of papers and the different textures and like the shiny ones and the glitter ones, I'm going to link them below the video for you. So you can just scroll down and hit show more and you'll be able to find exactly where I got all my supplies. So um, like I said, I am using a cutting machine. It's pretty much required to have a cutting machine for something like this because of the intricate cuts. You can use a light grip blue mat or you can use a green mat that has already been used a few times and isn't quite as sticky as when you first take it out of the package. Either will work for your cart stuff. You may also want to have a Cricut scraper or something similar nearby to get all the little pieces off of your mat as you're um, cutting out all of your Mandela designs. So I'm going to show you just a basic um, how I load and do a cutout for this. It's pretty simple. And then I'm going to start showing you how to assemble some of these Mandelas. So like I said, a light uh, blue mat is generally best if you don't have a green mat on hand that's already been used a couple times because the green mat might be a little too sticky if you're using a thinner paper. Um, if you're using a, like, a thicker cardstock paper, then the green mat will work just fine for you. Um, I'm going to start with one of my glitter papers here for um, the uh, center of my sunflower. I did a metallic and brown um, center for this one, but I'm going to do a metallic brown and a black glitter for the center of the one we're going to build in this video just to try something different. You're going to want to select the corresponding um, setting on your computer for design space. So if you're doing a glitter cardstock, search glitter cardstock and make sure that's the corresponding setting. If you're doing a light cardstock, then make sure you select light cardstock. If it's a, a medium cardstock, then make sure you select that. Just make sure your settings are appropriate. Now, here's one thing I want to say. Um, if you're doing anything that is very intricate, like this turkey here, you can see all the little intricate cuts. I strongly recommend using the cardstock for intricate cuts setting in Design Space and try not to use a super heavy um, cardstock for that one. Use like a medium weight or a lightweight cardstock for that one and they will turn out good. If you're having any trouble with your paper ripping, then that is a great hack to know to make sure you use that cardstock for intricate cut setting inside of Cricut Design Space. I'm just going to load my mat and it's going to do the work for me. Go ahead and click go when it tells you to and depending on the complexity of your design, it might take a couple minutes, it might take maybe even five or ten minutes to cut everything out. Now, anytime you remove something like this from your mat, it's helpful to flip the mat over and peel the mat away from the material rather than the material away from the mat. It's going to prevent curling of your material. There we go. So we've got that piece cut out. 
for the center of our sunflower piece, or our sunflower mandala. And I'm gonna use my Cricut scraper to just get all these off real quick. You might wanna keep a trash can nearby, or you can just do what I do and just sort of sweep them onto the floor and then have a cleanup party after you're done making mandalas. Get all those little pieces off. So the next piece I'm gonna cut out here is one of these sunflower layers, and I'm using a text weight um, metallic cardstock for this. Again, these resources are linked below this video. This is one of these examples because of all these little cuts we have here and the lightness of this metallic cardstock paper that I recommend switching over to the cardstock for intricate cuts in Design Space. So make sure you change that setting before loading the next mat. You're gonna find with that intricate cut setting that it will be a lot cleaner and neater for these detail pieces. I would have normally done the intricate for this one as well, except for the fact that this was a thick glitter cardstock, so um, it didn't require me to do that. This is a lighter um, paper and it's more prone to tearing, so that is why I went with the cardstock for intricate cut setting. So I now have all of my pieces cut out for our Sunflower Mandela and we're going to start assembly. So it's important to know here that assembly for mandelas is basically the same across the board. You're just going to work with the thickest, least detailed image first and then progressively add the detailed um, layers on top of it. Um, if you're loving any of the designs that you see here, I have several on my blog uh, for free for a limited period of time so be sure to check out those links below. Um, this video and I also am going to be adding a lot more to my shop as well and that link is also below for you. So like I said, no matter what you're um, layering here, they're all very simple. You just want to follow the process of the least detailed solid piece to the more detailed um, layer um, as your top piece. So of course I'm going to start over here with these. I'm just going to set these aside a little bit here. And it's a good idea, and some of your mandelas will come together differently in this aspect, but for this particular one, I chose this one because it's a little extra challenging, so if you can do this one, you can definitely do the rest of them. This one's very round and very, very much of a pattern here, so you might need to take a second just to double check that everything is lining up where it should before you actually start taping anything down. There we go. So see how I just double checked that there and I want to make sure that all edges are even and nothing's off. If you're doing any of these other ones here, it's going to be super easy to figure that out because you can clearly see where the top and the bottom of these things are. This is round, so it's a little bit trickier to know um, the top and the bottom part. And then next, you want to think about your uh, foam mounting tape. So like I said, the mounting tape comes in lots of different sizes. You can have super small ones, you can have larger ones. The larger ones work best. For the bottom and the smaller ones work best for the more intricate top layer pieces. So I'm going to start with just a few of these first and I'm going to lift this off, try and keep track of exactly where I want to set it up there once I go to put it back down. And I'm going to add some foam tabs. You just want to make sure when placing your tabs here that um, you don't have to have a ton of them, you just need to have enough to where the layer is properly supported from all sides. So I have four here and then two in the middle to support, and I know that that's going to be plenty to keep it nice and level when we place it on. Once you get your foam tabs placed, you can just remove the extra little backing piece that makes them sticky. And then I'm just going to flip this over and hover for a second to make sure that I have kept the proper alignment, and I have. So now I can go ahead and just press that down and we have our first layer added there. And now we're going to move on to this one. And again, I want to check because this one is kind of hard to tell what the top and the bottom is. I just want to check my alignment and then kind of keep track of that. This top point here, I'm just going to flip this and then I'm going to start adding foam caps again. And this one is wide enough that um, it's got enough space there between the cutouts that I can stick with the larger foam tabs still. When we get to the next layer, we'll probably need to move down to the smaller ones. Okay, so now I'm gonna lift this up, flip it over, hover for just a second there to make sure my alignment is good, and then go ahead and place it down. 
So there we go. So we got our third layer added. And now we're going to move on to these two layers and they're a little more intricate. So you're going to probably want to start to use the smaller uh, foam tabs here. And I'm just going to grab some of these. You may want to check your alignment. I didn't do that part. There we go. So there is my fourth piece of my mandala. And now we're going to move on to the last piece here for the um, main part of our sunflower. So like I said, there are a lot of different types of foam tabs and stuff out there. And these are the really small ones and they're good. They're a little difficult to work with. So for this one, I'm actually going to use a different one just to show you a variation. They make some that are little strips like this and then you can sort of cut them as needed. Um, and I will link these below the video as well if you're interested in them. So I like trying to kind of use whichever one is going to work well, but also be not too much work for me to have to, to set up on my cardstock. Now, if you want to get like really detailed, you could go in and you could add tabs around all these points. Um, I have not found that to be really necessary. Um, if it's well supported in the center and it's got good contact, then you're pretty much good to go. Um, I've never been too detailed with where I put my foam tabs and I've never had any problems with my mandalas coming apart. They've been totally fine. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a try. Like I said, if you wanna go in and add foam tabs around the tip, you absolutely can. I do not find it to be um, very necessary for my project. Um, I feel like it's completely fine without it. As you can see, I tested these before and I haven't had any problems with the end result. I'm giving that a press there. And now we have all five layers here and that's why I love adding a metallic or um, a glitter layer because it just really makes it pop even more with the dimension. So now we just need to add this piece. Now for this piece, with any mandala, if you have an extremely intricate top piece, I generally recommend adding just clear glue and to become an accent piece. And then of course we would add our foam tape underneath the brown here to elevate it here on the mandala. I do not recommend trying to elevate this piece um, with foam tabs. I just recommend putting a little bit of clear glue and making it sort of a detailed accent piece, which is what I'm going to do here. Because this can get really challenging with those really top intricate pieces to try and get the foam tabs on there. So I come in with a little bit of uh, Tombow liquid glue here. You can use any clear liquid glue, it'll be fine. This is the one I use. I'll link it for you below the video. And I just dot a little bit of glue throughout the layer and then I carefully pick it up and you're going to want to check your alignment here which of course I did beforehand but then I moved it around this is right there we go and just give that a little bit of a press and once the glue is dry, anything that you might have missed on the edges there, it won't even show, which is why I love this clear glue. And then we just have to add our center on, which is super, super easy. And we can go back to the larger foam tabs for that one because it's a nice solid piece. And I'm just going to put three of these on, like so. Pull off your little back. And there's really no alignment with this piece. It's kind of free form for the sunflower design. So I'm just gonna make sure I center it well and then give it a little press. And our sunflower mandala is all finished. So our sunflower mandala is complete now. Got all those beautiful layers in there. And that's why I really love adding a glitter or a metallic layer because it really just adds that much more dimension. You can see I did a shimmer metallic with this one here and that turned out really cool. All mandalas are built very similar. Um, I have a pumpkin one here that I built and I have a leaf 
and um, even a turkey for Thanksgiving. And I'm going to be sharing a lot more about mandelas in an upcoming blog series on my blog, abbykirstencollections.com. So be sure to visit the links below so you don't miss any of these files. I'm going to be giving away some for free. And um, I'm also going to be sharing some really cool ways that you can use mandelas that you may have not thought of yet. Um, there's so many different shapes you can do with mandelas. Um, like I have this snowflake shape here that I did, and this um, layer here that is extra sparkly is Cricut Party Foil. Um, so don't be afraid to get creative with your layers, um, and I would love to see what you're creating. So go ahead and visit the link below this video and share with me your mandela creations in our Facebook group. I'll see you there. Bye for now.